Hi everybody and welcome to Hands-On Games. In this episode we're talking about Stratomatic Baseball. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Hands-On Games and today is uh, a pretty special episode for me. We're talking about the first real uh, advanced board game that I think I ever played, um, Stratomatic Baseball. Stratomatic to me is middle school. It's summers um, spent um, rolling lots of games by myself and with friends. It's about um, remembering watching Phillies games while rolling games. It's about it's about how much fun it was to get these cards out of the box and um, detach them and separate them and put them in the teams and figure out lineups. It's about um, these dice. Uh, it's about a ridiculously simple rule set for the version of the game that I enjoyed so much. That's it. Those two pages is everything you need to know about playing Stratomatic Baseball. It's about only needing two charts to play the game. And it's about these, these awesome cards that I already mentioned. Um, probably what I consider some of the most well-designed, um, easy to use, great cards of any, of any um, sports tabletop game. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself though. I want to tell you a little bit about um, how this game ended up on the channel this week. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I happened to walk into a toy store, a local toy store called Geppetto, um, Geppetto Toys. It's a, it's a chain. I, um, I live in Southern California. I'm assuming there's Geppetto toy stores other places. I wasn't going in there to look for new games to add to my collection. I know it's not the kind of store that, that carries um, board games, but they happen to have it on their shelf. And so while I'm very familiar with Stratomatic Baseball, and while it's a fixture of my youth, I lost it somewhere uh, along the way, somewhere between college and um, today, the game disappeared. I haven't seen it in, in a long time. Um, so really the last time I played Stratomatic was probably when I was about 14 years old, so 32 years ago. Um, but I always knew I wanted to add it back into my collection. I have, you know, having gotten back into board games, I knew I wanted to have it there on the shelf with the rest of the games, if nothing else, as a, uh, as a marker um, to know where I came from um, in terms of uh, my, my gaming. So, I saw it at the toy store, um, had to buy it. This is what the box looks like now. Um, it's the same shape and size as I remember it. The contents are largely the same actually 30 years later, um, but the look, the look is a little different. Um, the cool thing, the most important thing about this video that I want to express to people, um, one, for memories for people who are familiar with it, and two, for people who are unfamiliar with it, is that 30 years later, I was able to open the box and start playing a game without even cracking open the rule book. That's how either ingrained it is in me or that's how um, intuitive the game is to play. And I'd like to think it's because it is intuitive. There are a ton of baseball games out on the market right now that are actively supported, not, uh, not out of print, but you know, still actively supported like um, APA and Stratomatic and Replay Baseball, all the games by Downey Games, by PT Games, um, FTP Sports, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm leaving, I'm leaving a lot out. Um, and I will probably get to a lot of them over the, life, uh, over the life of this channel. Uh, but this one is special and I have to think that this one is the inspiration for many of the other games that people are playing today. Um, and as far as I know, Stratomatic is still either number one or number two along with APA um, as far as um, probably the most widely played um, sports games on the market. But getting back to the original point that I wanted to make, 
uh, 30 years later, I was rolling the dice and um, basically I was back in middle school. So, um, yeah, Stratomatic Baseball. It's a tabletop baseball game. You play it with dice. You read results off the player card. Like I was showing you before, you read the results off of these cards. And if you're like me, as a 12 year old, you simply mark outs on the game board or you move your runner pawn on the game board and you keep the score in your head or you keep the score in a notepad. Typically when you're playing against a friend as a 12 year old, you're each keeping your own team score. So we would play these games all summer. We'd keep track of wins and losses and that's really about it. Now that's kind of sacrilege I know to, to a lot of my viewers right now. But guys, remember, we're in our 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s now. Um, we're a little bit more mature. Stats, you know, are important. But as a 12-year-old, um, yeah, it, it, it wasn't that important. It was just about playing with your friends and, and who could get the most wins and who was going to win the most games that summer with their team. Um, so that's what, that's what this game, those are the kind of memories that this game brings back to me. And I bring that up. I'm sort of focusing on the... the um, the ease of play aspect and the youthful aspect in this particular segment because often you'll see threads on the forums where people are asking how can I get my kids into board gaming so I'm here to tell you if you've got a kid that likes baseball he's at least eight years old um, I'd say the wheelhouse is right around 12 years old but up to 14 um, late elementary school definitely middle school if you haven't bought a copy of Stratomatic Baseball yet, and he's already a baseball fan, I highly encourage you to do so. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great way to get him um, away from the video games for a little while. It's a great two-player experience. It's a great um, uh, um, mother-daughter, father-son, father-daughter, mother-son experience. Um, it really is so easy, so, um, and so well made, and that's why it's lasted all these years. So, um, I'm not gonna, I'm really not gonna even play a full game today. It's not necessary. Um, I have the components set up um, on another part of my table. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, briefly explain how the game is played. And, you know, I'll come back for some more, some more final thoughts, but, but, um, yeah, this is, you know, maybe I'm finding uh, this so hard to explain because Stratomatic is so ingrained um, in, in, my, um, in my mind, uh, in my internal uh, library of rule sets. You know, I never forgot it's like riding a bike. So for those of you who are just thinking it's like riding a bike, um, yes, that's what it's like. And I'm glad the, the words finally came to my head. Um, when you when you buy Stratomatic baseball these days, at least the version I got in the uh, in the toy store, it comes with only six teams. It comes with uh, a random selection of teams from the 2011 season. So it's possible these boxes have been on the shelf for a little while, um, but that's okay. It, it's enough to get you started. They also have a uh, Stratomatic Express version, which comes in a smaller box, contains some uh, all-stars from recent years and it also simplifies the rule set even further from the basic version of Stratomatic. So that's another version you could look at if you just want to go for a lower price point. Although this box that I showed you is only a little over $20 and the Express version I think is about $12.95 or so. Don't quote me on that but I think that's about what it is. So when you buy the game you get the teams, you get the dice, you get all the charts you need I showed you the charts for the, um, the basic version, which is, I, I prefer they call that the classic version because that's what I played hundreds of games of with my friend. However, for those folks that require a little bit more detail in their baseball game, they've got um, extra rules. So I already mentioned you have two pages of rules for the basic game. And then you've got another uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 pages of advanced and super advanced rules. Um, so things like um, power ratings, ensuring that 
your weaker hitters aren't going to roll um, too many doubles or home runs. You've got the lefty-righty matchups, which so many people find important. Um, runner advancement on base hits. In the basic game of Stratomatic, you're not worried about the arm strength of that center fielder trying to make the throw to third. Um, but in the advanced and super advanced rules, you are. Um, and something else that I remember greatly about the, um, the basic game of Stratomatic is that for pitchers, for fatigue, you didn't have to worry about it. Um, in the advanced game, there's fatigue rules, so pitchers will tire, and if you're playing this, you know, for a serious season replay, you can be sure those rules are in here. Um, but for us as 12-year-olds, if we wanted our starter to go into extra innings, you know, it was great. It allowed for, for great banter and great, you know, fights between us about, hey, you can't leave your starter in that long. You, you need to bring in a reliever. He's too good. So um, it was fun. Uh, the basic game was fun, and it's still, I'll be honest, um, I play a lot of baseball games. I still prefer basic Stratomatic, and I still prefer... Um, all the other baseball games, typically, usually they're more, they're more basic or classic format where you don't get bogged down in a lot of extra die rolls or a lot of checks. So if, if you're watching this video and you feel that I do not give Stratomatic its due because I'm not going into the advanced or super advanced rules, I do apologize. Um, but in this channel, I just like to sort of um, speak from, um, from where I'm coming from in my, uh, in my gaming world, and, and that's where I am. So I can truthfully and honestly speak to this game and how much adoration I have for it um, based on how I uh, like to play it and how I enjoy playing it. Um, so I think that's quite a bit of rambling about my history with the game and and how much I like it. Um, oh, I need to close the thread. So, so yeah, so this is a game that um, I haven't seen since uh, the last time I saw it in my closet in the house that I grew up in. Then I moved away, uh, went to college. Next time I saw all my stuff, um, a lot of things were gone, including Stratomatic, um, garage sale or, or, uh, or Goodwill or something. So hopefully my old Stratomatic game and seasons went to a good home. Um, but now I've got another copy. Um, maybe at some point, you know, I think I'll dabble in maybe some of the, the great teams just to, just to roll a game here and there. Um, but it's just really nice to have it back. I don't know if you guys feel that way about games you used to have when you were younger. Um, but for me, it's just neat to see games on the shelf that um, mean something to me. All right, so uh, let me turn the camera around. Uh, for those of you who are already familiar with the game, this is going to be a, um, a very boring overview, but for those of you who have heard of Stratomatic, um, you're maybe coming over here from the Board Game Geek forums and you're not really a sports gamer, uh, take a look at what I'm going to show you, um, and hopefully you have some interest in baseball. So if you have some interest in baseball and um, you, know, you enjoy uh, playing head-to-head -head against someone or solitaire, because let me tell you, no games play better solitaire than sports games, period. Um, I know a lot of people on the Geek try to turn more abstract thematic games into two-player games that were generally meant for two players and they, they play both sides. Um, playing both sides in a sports game is so easy. Um, so if you haven't tried it and you're thinking about it, um, this game would be a great place to start. All right, so um, let's take a look at it. All right, so let me do my best to explain why this game is uh, so accessible and, and so easy to play, um, yet you know, feels deep and satisfying, and it's going to engage um, you know, a youngster interested in the game or someone older who's also a baseball fan. The key is in the, the cards themselves. Um, you'll notice that I'm holding a, a batter's card on the left and a pitcher's card on the right. And you've got six columns. For each at-bat, now, and also I should mention, Stratomatic is an at-bat by at-bat baseball game. So if you're not familiar with sports games, especially baseball games or baseball strategy games, you're not going to be rolling the dice for every pitch. You're simply going to roll the dice once for each batter's at-bat to find out what he did that at-bat. Did he strike out? Did he walk? Did he get a hit? Did he hit a home run? Etc. It all happens with about 80% of the time, one roll of these three dice. And the other 20% of the time, you may need to roll 
the D20 uh, to get the final result on a fielder's check, for example. But you'll notice the six columns. The first die, the white die, when you roll them, is going to tell you which column do you read the result from. The columns one through three on the pitcher's card, or columns four through six on the batter's or on the pitcher's card. So this is what's known as a 50-50 game. So in each roll of the dice, you have a 50-50 chance of reading the result from the pitcher's card, which is typically going to be more advantageous for the pitching team, or from the hitter's card, which typically is going to be more advantageous for the hitting team. And what's super cool about this is when you roll the dice and you get the column, you're going to roll all three and also add up the two red dies, the two red die values to get the result number. So in this case, a result of two, which is the column on the white die, and eight, which is the row with the red dice, would result in two eight, a ground out. So in a Stratomatic baseball player card, you're going to get um, just enough information um, to have a, a real satisfying deep baseball experience, but it's not going to overload you with information you don't need. You have the player name, you have the team he plays for, you have the positions that he played in the season that's being represented, and how well or poorly he did at that position. The defensive ratings are from one to five. When you see a number one next to that fielder's position, you know he was very good at that position that year. Uh, a number five means not so much. So in this particular case, Alex Gordon of the 2011 Kansas City Royals played left field primarily because that position is listed on top, but also played some first base and he was much better as a left fielder. His stealing rating is a B. That comes into play when you want to attempt to steal, and I'll, and I'll show that on the chart later, and running rating as well when you're trying to um, get some extra bases. Now, the columns are full of results uh, from 2 to 12, which is based on the two red dice that you rolled together. And you'll see sometimes, if you look over here in column 3, you'll have a result of 5, a 1 to 8 is a home run, and 9 to 20 is a double. That adds some suspense to the game. So you've got this D20 that you're going to roll to find out the final result for that at bat. Um, it's, it, you know, it adds some excitement to the game. And then down at the bottom of the card, you have his uh, actual statistics from the season being represented by this particular card. And this is helpful, especially for youngsters when they're trying to put together their lineups or just understand who are the better players in the team. But after a while, you won't need to use this information. You'll be able to tell how good or bad a player is just by reading the possible results that, that come off the card. And it's also a good way to teach kids about probabilities because as you know, the likelihood of rolling a seven with two six-sided dice is greater than rolling a two or a 12. So it's not just about the results that are on printed on the cards, it's also the probability that they'll be um, rolled on any given uh, die roll. So, you know, it's a good way to teach kids about probabilities as well. On the pitcher's card, uh, similar, uh, similar attributes, the name and the team, the defensive rating as, the, as a pitcher, also a notation of which batting card that pitcher will use. It's, the game comes with generic cards to allow the pitchers to take an at bat if you're gonna if you're gonna go ahead and play with National League rules and whether the pitcher is a starter or a reliever. The game does ask you that you only use starting pitchers as starting pitchers and relievers as relievers and then all of the results and their pitching record down below. The game board that comes with the game is a little bit different than what I remember from 30 years ago, but the idea is the same. You're going to track your outs over here, 0, 1, or 2, and you're going to track your base runners. Um, you, know, you can put your pawns out here when you have runners on base to keep track of how many folks you have on base. Now this is important because as the game progresses, you're going to have results that require you, let me just pull one up here, take a look at um, result number 8 here where it says ground ball to shortstop, A. Now you will memorize what that means, but when you're just learning the game, you're gonna reference this chart. And it tells you on a ground ball, the batter is out at first, and if there's no runners forced, the runners hold. If one or more runners are forced, runner on first is out, completion of a double play, other runners advance one base. So you'll learn that if you've got a runner on first, 
and you roll a ground ball A, that you're going to have a double play. You're going to get two outs, and these two runners are removed from the bases. So two outs and base is empty. It's a really great way to, um, to capture the essence of what happens in a real Major League game because you're using real Major League stats. And pretty much, I would say, you know, I'm going to use the 80-20 rule. The basic version of Stratomatic Baseball captures what happens in a real baseball game, you know, for about 80% of the time. If you want those nuances, if you want the extra things that can happen, the crazy plays, you are going to want to move on to um, the advanced or super advanced version of the game. And, that, you know, that just means incorporating some extra charts, um, some extra tables that you'll have to refer to during the game. Now, it also means using the reverse side. No magic here. It's just simply the reverse side of a player card. So again, you're going to have that same information that I shared on the front. You're going to have um, uh, the, the name and, and their stealing rating and their running rating, but it adds a lot more too. They have bunting ratings and hit and run ratings. And they also have, probably the most important part, two different sets of columns. Instead of just um, three possible results, three possible columns of results, you now have six. If you're facing a lefty, you're going to read from the blue side. If you're facing a righty, you're going to read from the red side. Now, um, for those of you unfamiliar with, uh, you know, with baseball strategy, it's a common rule of thumb, and statistics bear this out, that a batter will perform different against um, a pitcher with, uh, who throws right-handed versus left-handed. In most cases, if it's an opposite hand from the way you bat, so if you bat right-handed and you're facing a lefty, in most cases, your um, batting average is going to be better from, uh, in that situation. So um, handedness um, and matchups in a baseball game, especially when you want to bring more strategy into it, are quite important. So for that, for that reason alone, um, I do recommend the advanced version for folks that want to up the game. But like I said, um, the basic game is what I played because really it's, it's, it's as easy as, let me do another at bat be between, uh, between Heron and Gordon. Here we go. So let's just pretend we've now got two outs, no men on base. Oh, what the heck? Let's just say bases are loaded. So two outs, bases loaded, bottom of the ninth. Let's just say uh, Heron's going for a complete game win. He's the starting pitcher. Alex Gordon is the last chance to knock a run home for the Royals. And he rolls a 2-3. Okay, the 2 tells you that you're going to read from Alex Gordon's card. Scroll down to 3. Ground ball B. It doesn't matter even what the B means. It's a ground out to second base. Sorry, third base. And the game is over. So that's it. So that's how easy Stratomatic is to play. Um, it's really, you know, most of the time you're going to be rolling these three dice. Sometimes you'll be adding in the D20. You're reading the results from this card. Sometimes these charts are going to help you out. And um, it's, it's that easy. And when you want to bring a little bit more strategy into it, um, I was talking about this chart. It not only tells you what happens with the base runners for ground outs and fly balls, but say you want to steal a base. It's nothing complicated. You don't have to check. You don't have to check ratings of the catcher's arm or anything. You just roll on these charts. You roll the D, uh, uh, a D20 um, based on the stealing rating of the player that you're, uh, that you're attempting to steal with. If you want to do a hit and run, go ahead. Try a hit and run. Roll 2D6 and uh, see what the chart tells you. Um, you, know, you want to do a sacrifice, a squeeze play. If you want to play the infield in, results will change based on that. It's just enough strategy to... Um, to one, for me as a, as a gamer, it's enough strategy to keep me engaged in a game that's already using real life stats that are represented on these cards with players that I know, um, because I know we're, we're using uh, 2011 teams here, but um, you can go ahead and order more recent teams, um, all time great teams to play with players you're familiar with. And they, they perform like they would on the field and again, for the young, the young kids out there, for your, for your children and grandchildren, I highly recommend the, playing the game this way. Don't bother bringing the score sheets into this. I, I didn't talk about that. Um, watch my History Maker Baseball video. You'll see that I love keeping score. 
Um, I do think that's an important part about teaching kids about baseball is how to score a baseball game. But to get them started, just put this mat, play mat in front of them. Put this one chart in front of them. Give them a stack of their own cards or have them make their own lineup and start rolling the dice and just get them interested in, in moving the pawns around and keeping track of how many outs there are. Then when it's when there's three outs, you, you take turns. Whoever's up to bat gets to roll the dice and whoever's pitching you know, will, will be the uh, observer for that inning. And, uh, and so that's Stratomatic. All right, guys, so that is Stratomatic Baseball. Um, it's been around for decades. It's probably gonna be around for decades. Um, the goal of this video today was not to do a full run through of Stratomatic Baseball and teach you all the rules. Um, first of all, the rules are the rules of baseball. Um, like I said in the, in the previous spot, um, it's you, it's rolling one set of dice for every at bat, for every batter, reading a result, you know, either booing or cheering, depending on what happened and, uh, and, you know, doing it until the game's over and God, what else can you do with the game? You can draft teams. You can buy, you can buy seasons and you can mix the players up and draft your own teams. We, we've done that before and that's a hoot. Um, uh, mixing and matching players not only from different teams from the same season, same seasons, but uh, players from from uh, all across baseball history. Doing that's fun. So, um, you know, final thoughts on on what this can mean for your family and for your kids. It's a great teaching tool. It's a great um, introduction to board gaming. It's a great introduction to sports board gaming. It's a great introduction to the strategies of baseball. Um, when you have your kids walking by the TV set and you're glued to a baseball game, but they don't understand what you know what's interesting about this. It's so slow. It's so boring. This is a game that starts to help them understand. Oh, okay, there are some nuances here. Of course, the twelve-year-old's not going to use the word nuance, but I think you get what I'm talking about. Um, in every at bat in a baseball game, for those of us that are fans, there's something to pay attention to. There's something interesting going on. This game helps bring that to life um, and does so. It eases you into it um, better than any, any game on the market can. Um, all the other games that I love to play, the rule sets are a little bit deeper than Stratomatic Basic. Stratomatic Basic gives you a really cool looking card and gives you um, a lot of ability just with one roll of the dice to make a lot of cool things happen easily without having to dig into rules and worry about um, combinations and permutations of things that can happen. Extra checks on a, on a, on a, on a fielder's arm or his range, etc. Uh -uh. um, and it provides, in the end, a final box score that looks like a real baseball box score. So. Yeah, you know, I, you know, my wife's a middle school teacher. I think often about how board games can be used as a teaching tool. So I think Stratomatic is a good one to teach the kids about the sport of baseball, about board games, about probability. I already talked about that. Um, I think, you know, having, having your son or your grandson or your daughter or your granddaughter looking at the cards and realizing, okay, what the probabilities are based on a certain situation, it's just good stuff to get them started um, for, for higher level thinking um, as they move on through school and um, as they play other games. Uh, learning about probabilities of certain die rolls um, is going to give them an edge in competitive board gaming as well. Um, so what else can I say about it from that standpoint? I think that's about it. Maybe I'm overdoing it a little bit, but I do believe in the power of board games um, uh, to, to do a lot of things. Um, one, it keeps the mind sharp for us older folks. Um, to be honest, that's why I see myself staying in this hobby long term. Um, rolling the dice and doing simple math in your head um, you know, goes a long way to, to, to keeping the, uh, the neurons firing and, and prevent, um, prevent uh, bad things from happening long term. Um, like I said, there's also the, uh, there's the social aspect of it. When you're playing head to head, it's a lot of fun. But also, um, so moving on from the what can this do for the youth of our nation angle to, um, to my audience who I know are, 
um, a split between solo board gamers and sports board gamers with maybe some, some other folks mixed in there as well. It's a great head-to-head -head game, no doubt. Um, managing against another person live is, is awesome, but I've done 99% of my sports gaming and my baseball gaming solitaire. Trust me, um, playing sports games solitaire, especially baseball, is, is highly rewarding and a ton of fun. Um, you're there at the park, you're calling the game, you're in the broadcast booth, or you're in the dugout managing the game, yelling at the players. Um, you know, just like you can get into the trenches in a war game, you can definitely get into the dugout in a baseball game. And, um, you know, bringing it back to Stratomatic and not just board gaming in general, Stratomatic makes it easy to, uh, is an easy entry point into that world for sports games. So I think that's my main point there for Stratomatic. All right. So yeah, it's uh, great for ages eight to 88 or 108. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's easy to find on the internet. Um, go to stratomatic.com, you know, buy the base game by seasons. If you're lucky like me, you might be able to find the base game in a toy store. It's getting harder and harder to find sports games in toy stores. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if I never see another sports game besides stratomatic baseball in a toy store uh, for the for foreseeable future, um, which is a shame. I remember when they were lining the shelves and we had a great selection. Um, too bad I was too young to afford them when I saw them, but uh, say la vie. Um, if you have any questions about Stratomatic or sports games in general, I'm happy to talk about them, love to talk about them, so leave me a comment. Um, we'll be covering more sports games in the future. If you haven't noticed, I'm trying to alternate between sports and, and uh, non-sports games on this channel. Um, so if you've already noticed that, kudos to you. Um, I think that's it for this episode. Uh, I'm really happy to have Stratomatic back in my collection, um, and I'm still I'm still thinking throughout the past couple days of how cool it was that that um, 32 years later I could open the box on a game that I hadn't played in th over three decades and start rolling the dice and having it all come back to me just like a flood, just like a dam burst, and just woof, it was all there. And um, the memories of my friends, the memories of, of the games we played, the memories of the rules. Um, yeah, uh, so this is cool. Um, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I found this game. I'm glad I did this episode. And I'm hoping that at least one of you out there who's never played Stratomatic will maybe give it a shot and it'll open up a door for you if you've been, um, you know, wanting to... Uh, to peer through that sports board gaming door. Uh, I think Stratomatic could be an easy way for you to do that. All right, so um, if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me, and I will see you soon with another episode.